too funny. <laughs> Don't fall over, Mary. <laughs> Don't fall over. These chairs are hard to maneuver. I won't edit that out either. I know you won't. <laughs> I know everybody's gonna say what's Mary doing? <laughs> Walking kind of tender toes. Got a little bit of owie on my knee, so what happened? Oh, who knows? I got something in there crunching around, and in this one, it, it crunches and crackles. And I got some new shoes. Didn't uh, you didn't get kicked by a cow? Oh, I'm sure I have, but just not in the recent. Not recently, huh? Not in the last, you know, <laughs> not since the last time we got together. Oh, and that's I good. and I do think it was the shoes. Oh, okay. A brand new pair of shoes. I went too long with my other one, and I think it. I don't know. You know how it changes your yeah, step. Yeah. Just just enough to upset the apple cart a little bit, you but know. it's better. My grandmother always said that wearing shoes wasn't good for your feet. No, no, and. I, I'm a barefooter. I like to be barefoot. I am too. I, I yeah. that was I agreed with Granny. That sounded good to me. <laughs> yep, I'm on that this that same train of thought. But no with Mary. <laughs> That's a surprise. Well anyway, to cut it short here anyway, Mary, before we get too far off track, because we never do that. Never. No, no. Never. We stay on script. Anyway, Mary, I was reading uh, this book, and I'll just let you hold the microphone. Ha! I get to be in charge. Yeah. It's called, uh, it was written in about 1961. It was called The uh, Hamlin School and Community, and, and that was up by, well, you know where Hamlin Valley Farms are now? Yes, yes. Yes, that was one of the original settlements in the county. And it's, it's fun to read, and I was looking through it, and then I found this picture, and uh, as I looked at it, it's of a lady by the name of Josephine Jensen, and she is there, uh, this was in 1948, when Whitehall was hosting the uh, celebration celebrating Wisconsin's 100th anniversary as a state. Okay. And there must have been, <coughs> excuse me, some kind of a a uh, display somewhere during the big celebration. Anyway, she is looking at the original sign that says Hamlin Post Office and then the desk that was used as the uh, post office. It, it has little uh, slots in it for the mail. And I looked at that and I thought, oh my gosh! Uh, that sign and the desk are down at the schoolhouse, the Lee Schoolhouse in Galesville. Oh my, what a hidden treasure! It is, and so I, I got a hold of the people that do the Oliva Museum, and I said, would you like the desk and the sign back? You know, it seemed appropriate. And they were, yes, 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 yes. Oh, but now there'll be a big open spot. Oh, it'll be a small open spot, and we need some room. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought you and I, because you're so big and strong, we need to go down and get this sign. It's kind of hung up in the basement. Okay. But I said, I'm not going up a ladder when there's nobody around, because if I fall off, they wouldn't find me for a good 20 years. Well, I think I think <laughs> they would find you by next fair. Cause, Maybe. Because <laughs> certainly, certainly you, we would realize that you were missing. Oh, there, hey, there she look is. Look who came to see yes, us. there she is. Yes, last time she was very crabby and didn't really want to play. No, but I said she'd have some issues. Of yeah. And obedience. here we go. <laughs> there you go, good girl. Yeah, and Come on up here. I'm not taking yeah. her along because if she's at the fairgrounds, she'd have to have a leash on, and we have yeah. to hold the leash, and so she can stay here anyway. And well, and she, uh, she did her cameo appearance yeah, on the did. show for today. <laughs> her little token appearance <laughs> <laughs> to keep us satisfied. That's right. Yeah. So Mary, I thought we'll mount up and we'll we'll go down to the fairgrounds because I know. Mary has got to go down to the bingo tent tonight at uh, Beef and Dairy Days. <laughs> She'll probably be there for hours and hours. <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> All right. We're going to pack it up, put it in the car, and get on the road. And away we go. Probably a lot of people in this county that have never heard of Hamlin 
but it was one of the earliest little settlements in the county up there in the town of Albion and it's all oh, just a couple miles south of where Eliva is today and one of the first settlers uh, was a man by the name of Moon M-O-O-N and we don't have his first name he lived there for a little while near this Hamlin and then uh, he ended up trading his land to a, a man by the name of Russell Bowers and uh, and uh, he just said it was too cold. <laughs> Mr. Moon said it was too cold. He'd had enough, that was it. So he traded with uh, Russell Bowers, and uh, that was 1857. And so Mr. Bowers and his family came up from Dane County. Again, I think it was in like an ox wagon, you know, so it was slow. <laughs> Pretty slow progress, but he did stay. The, the cold didn't drive him away. And so they, he became the first postmaster, and uh, it wasn't official until 1866 when he was officially appointed the postmaster, and he called the new uh, post office, he called it Hamlin, and people re uh, referred to it as Hamlin Corners, but he just called it Hamlin. And so you're we're trying to figure out where that name came from. Yeah, I don't know, this is just a guess, but there was a man by the name of Hannibal Hamlin, and he was from Maine, and he was actually Abraham Lincoln's first vice president. And I guess he was a pretty admirable guy, so maybe they named it after Hannibal Hamlin. Maybe he was a fan. So that was the first post office. And back then, the post office, you know, usually it was a store or maybe in somebody's house, and the letters would come, and uh, there was no, of course, no rural uh, delivery. People would stop by looking for, you know, to see if they had any mail, and that's how these early post offices were. Um, and it was the only post office for a long time between Osseo and Mondovi. So uh, it was much appreciated. And it's interesting that that settlement up there in Albion around Eliva and uh, Hamlin was uh, not Norwegian. It wasn't Polish or German. Most of the names were just regular English type names, people that had come from the East originally. So it was a little different than a lot of our, our uh, settlements in this county. Then a man by the name of Goddard, G-O-D-D-A-R-D, he set up a store where Eliva is now. And at that time, they called Eliva New Chicago. They had uh, big, uh, big ideas, big plans <laughs> for this town. But the name got changed to Eliva. And Mr. Goddard also started uh, a little post office, although at first, if he got bail at his store, he would take it down to Hamlin. And, uh, but after a while, uh, the train came through and things changed. And so Hamlin kind of became a non-entity as a village anyway. And it was Eliva that became the spot. So that's kind of the history of what they call Hamlin or Hamlin Corners. And today, um, I think it's right around where the big Hamlin Valley uh, dairy farm is. And that's run by, was it Gullick's Roots? Yes. So that's, and we don't know exactly where the name Hamlin came from, but considering the time span, um, it's a good guess that it might have been named after uh, Abe Lincoln's first vice president, Hannibal Hamlin. tractors, don't they? Somebody going for a tractor drive. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like fun. That's what you and Bruce need to do.
Okay, Mary, we are back here at the fairgrounds and at the Lee Schoolhouse. Yeah. And the last time we were here, I took you down in the basement. Who would have known that there was this <laughs> huge headstone <laughs> down in the basement of the school? So what we have to explain is the story of the school was moved here from Jackson County. Yes. And uh, I'm not sure if they built the basement and then moved the school onto it or they did the basement. Anyway, uh, for a while they tried to have uh, a museum down in the basement. It must have been oh, the late 70s, early okay. 80s. But there were two problems, one being uh, some big rains and there got to be a lot of water down there and there isn't any drain in the floor. Uh, and the other one is uh, it wasn't handicap accessible. You oh, had to go okay. downstairs. And then the other problem was that a lot of the people that were working with this little museum, they passed away. Oh, a generational loss. Yeah, so uh, all the stuff that was in this little museum was down here in this basement getting kind of moldy and not used, which um, finally, a couple weeks ago, uh, the Arnold House people and Old Main here in Galesville and the wonderful Arcadia Historical Society, uh, they came down here and we met and I had a dumpster and I thought, oh, this is going to take all day probably. It took two hours. It was wonderful. I said they were just like the tidal wave coming in and everybody getting the stuff that they wanted for their displays. Well, you're lucky you didn't call me because I'd still be sifting through stuff going, but can't we keep it? <laughs> It'll be have significance someday. <laughs> well, a lot of the stuff was just, it had gotten too wet and too moldy and it had to go. But there were other objects that were just fine, and so they went to new homes, I think, where now people can appreciate them, because there was no point in it being down in the basement. Right, nobody could see it. Nope. And Tremplow County is full of historical treasures. It is, and so I always recommend people. Now, Oliva has a little museum. Arcadia has that great museum there in the old uh, OLPH church. And uh, there's Old Main down here in Galesville, and also the Arnold House, which is just kind of across the road here. So there, if you've got a historical interest, there's lots of things to see. Yes. So today our main object is to get the Hamlin Post Office sign and the desk. And the sign is down in the basement, and it's kind of hanging on a wall, and I told Mary, I was not gonna go <laughs> down there and go up on a ladder without somebody <laughs> because if I fell off the ladder, um, they would not find me there for years and years. She would disappear <laughs> like poor Ed Jellin. I'd be another disappearance. And then by the time they found you, all there'd be would be a head. Probably. <laughs> oh, God. What a thought. All right. We are going to uh, move Oh, down. they would know that you were missing, Nancy. You think so? But yes. they wouldn't know where I was, maybe. Well, we would eventually figure it out. Ooh, the smell. We're kind of smart The smell. <laughs> well, we could track you on your phone. That's true. That's true. Missing Nancy. Missing Nancy. Missing yeah. Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to go down and get that sign. Okay. And uh, hopefully it'll be without incident. <laughs> and load up a desk. Yes. Sing that today. And it did turn out really well. All right, here we go down into the basement. And it's much cooler down here. <laughs> And there's William. All right, now I gotta go over and plug in the light. I can see my way there. Do, 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 do. Well, at least when we clean the. <laughs> Jeez, Mary! I'm gonna get you. <laughs> okay. Let's see here. We got it. I can't even see to plug it in. There we go. We have light. So you can see that uh, it got cleaned out for the most part. And there's the Hamlin Post Office sign up there. And before we couldn't get to it because there was too much junk in front of it. 
And this thing here, I know you probably can't see it on the light. It's what is called a clothes mangle. And what you did was you put your laundry through here, like your sheets and, and uh, shirts and stuff, and you could crank it down. You know, you could really get the tension, and then you'd roll it through, and it would squeeze out all the water after so you washed. So, like the uh, first or uh, uh, early an early version of the ringer. Right, except it wasn't attached to any kind of a, a machine. No, this one probably sat outside. And it's heavy. It is, is it, oh, you've got it. It is out. steel. It is like cast iron. And um, Arnold House said they would like this too. We just have to figure out we got to get enough people here to move it back upstairs. Got to get some big guys. Yeah. Football players. You got any football players that could run over here? All right, I'm going to see how this is held on. And this is where my assistant, Jim, <laughs> goes to get the saber-toothed cat out of the cave. Look at the muscles. Yeah. She didn't need me to come down well, here to I help her. Well, I did, because I, if I wound up laying on the floor, <laughs> I just knew I would be here forever. Okay. Well, that was painless so far. Good. Okay. I'll just have to get the desk. Drama. Yeah, those ledgers, they're heavy and, and they're all moldy and wet and they need to be hauled out of here and put into a dumpster. Another day. That'll, yeah, yeah, and another dumpster. Dumpsters are very expensive. Woo! And that's it. And close the door behind you. Yeah, and then you'll be stuck down here forever and ever. Nancy? What? Nancy? Well, let me out of here. <laughs> Nancy, take the lock off the door. Nancy. I'm sorry, Mary. Nancy. You are just too irritating. We're just going to leave you, you down here. <laughs> let me out. You just have to stay down here. Sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Nancy, what were you doing? I just wanted to get your adrenaline bubbling. <laughs> Okay, onward. Okay. All right, Mary, this is the old post office desk from the picture from the Hamlin Valley. And see, it's got all those little cubby holes and things. And that was where the mail was stuck. Cool. So we're gonna take all the stuff off of it. I think you and I can move it. I don't think it's that heavy. We gotta get that eagle off of there though. Okay. Ah, uh, let's see, 1910, admit Gentlemen and ladies to the May dance at the Galesville Opera House. That would have been a nice piece of mail to receive. Yeah, I if wonder that if that indeed was mail. Yeah, I guess nobody ever had to use it. Huh? Okay, that looks pretty empty. Then we gotta get Mr. Eagle down off of there. Now, is there anything in the roll up? Oh, a flag, a flag. and some glass. What was the flag? Yeah. 
Okay. And All right. You take this. I first. I got to get that eagle off. You of take this. All right. I okay. got it. And now. Is he heavy? Really? Nope. I thought he'd be heavy. Okay. No, because he's full of foam. Just put him over there on that gray chair okay. for now. Yeah. Follow it. Oops. Sorry. Put him over there on that gray chair. That's pretty solid looking. And this is appropriate, Mary, because you are a DNR person. And this is, I always said, this eagle would probably give DNR people a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> what? A stuffed eagle? <laughs> yes, I'm afraid so. Yeah, you probably need a permit. I can look into that for you. Well, I think it's pretty old. I'm not real worried about it. <laughs> he wasn't done lately. All right. It's hard to believe I'm moving a piece of history. It is. And it's beautiful. And I wonder if it wasn't painted green at one time. Could be. Here we go. Look at us, a bunch of tough farm girls. <laughs> We're carrying history here. We are carrying a piece of history back to its home. Okay, now we should be able to push it in. There. Now we got to kind of lift it up and then lift and wiggle. Let's see, just a little bit farther so I can get this thing shut. Are we close? Let me see. I might have to move my seat up. Let me see here. No, perfecto. Ta-da! We did it. We did it. Okay. Yay! Zoo. Oh, it wasn't that heavy. I could tell it wasn't that heavy. I'm pretty sure that sign is made from oak, but I don't think that cabinet was. All right, Mary, we got one more thing we're going to look at today here. And this is a new addition to the schoolhouse. And it was donated by Doug Waller and his wife. And it is the good old box on the wall, the old-fashioned uh, telephone with the receiver and here you rang your number and you talked in here and it was a lot of fun during the fair because a lot of kids came through and they had no idea what it was. One little boy when we told him it was a, a telephone his eyes got like you know 50 cent pieces because the only phone I think he's ever seen has been you know, the little rectangle that you carry around in your pocket. The idea of a phone that looked like this and hung on a wall was just totally, you know, outer space for him. <laughs> but when I was a kid, we did have a box on the wall, although we didn't have this kind of a, a speaker or we had, or this kind of a receiver. We had one that's more like a regular, you know, you hold it in your hand like a regular uh, telephone receiver, what was a regular. And I remember our, my uh, phone call, it was, our phone number was too long and four short because everybody on that party line had their own distinctive phone number. Uh, the neighbors, theirs was uh, five long, another neighbor was too long and too short, and uh, my uncle it was too long and three short. I can't was that the number of rings? Well, that was when you wanted to call them on your party line. That was what you claimed. Mine was too long and four short. So you cranked it too, too long and then beep, 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 beep. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> and it was funny because after a while, you just, when you heard the phone ring, you kind of mentally, list, you know, listened. It was like on autopilot if you listened to hear your particular ring. And if it rang in the middle of the night, you knew it was either A, somebody being born, or B, somebody dying, or C, somebody's house or barn was on fire. 
So uh, it worked just fine, really. And, and these, um, I don't know what you would call these, you let you speak into, they were, uh, they were really pretty sensitive because even if you were a short person like I was, and if you kind of angled it down and, and spoke up that way, it picked it up. So this was used for many, many years. This was the old telephone. And some schools did have telephones. Some didn't, but many of them did. So we thought this was a really great addition down here to Lee School, and we want to thank the Wallers because it was a lovely addition. And then here, you might like this. This is a book that you might want to take home, Mary. It's about the farm dairy, and it is from 1908. And it was written by a man by the name of H.B. Gerler. And it's in absolute pristine condition. So <laughs> there's probably a lot of advice in here about raising dairy cattle, things that have maybe been forgotten. Oh, I bet. Yeah. Have you ever heard of him, Gerler? No. Oh, well. Yep, this was... Are whole... you trying to get rid of books? No, we actually pared down our, our selection here at the schoolhouse to make it so it would be more like the books that would have been in the schoolhouse when it was, you know, operating. So we've got, we've got an old, uh, we've got Bible st uh, stories, we've got fiction, we've got blue books, um, you know, we've got a good collection. And we've got a bunch of old annuals here. Some are from uh, Galesville and Gale Ettrick. And here's the Healy Echo, that was Tremplo. Uh, there's some here from Whitehall, which is just a real interesting collection of uh, old annuals, high school annuals. Books. Yep. And I will not lock you in this time. <laughs> Okay, we're up here at the Oliva Museum and we are bringing back the uh, Hamlin Post Office and the sign. We thought it was more appropriate up here at the Oliva Museum than down uh, in the basement at the fairgrounds. And I told Mary I hadn't been here for a while and this is a beautiful facility. For people that have never been up here to their museum, it looks like a really nice facility. It's new, new roof. It's got a place here where you can have a picnic, and it's right on the banks of the Oliva Pond. There's a walking trail. This is really, really nice. So we do want to encourage people to uh, come up and see it. Now I see there's some plaques here on the wall, and um, one says that the windmill was given in memory of Mr. and Mrs. Kruger by son Larry and uh, OIM Well Drilling and employees. Uh, installed it, which maybe wasn't the easiest thing. 
uh, in 2010, and then it was serviced by Terry Nichols. And the landscaping, which is beautiful, is donated by Chuck Harper and the Family Farms and the Edison Lawn Care. And if we come around here, Mary, you can see what a beautiful job of landscaping they have. So the desk and the sign is going to have a good home. <laughs> Oh, look at here, a volunteer tomato. <laughs> oh, yeah. I get those, too, this time of year. Usually they're growing out of my compost pile. But look at the beautiful uh, flower bed they have here. This is just gorgeous. They even have this little rock wall. And, uh, well, it's large rocks either it's it's really nice Mary you like rocks you'll like you'll appreciate this you know it takes a lot of people to keep a facility up like this it takes a lot of volunteer hours and uh, I know a lot of people like to have it in their community but it takes people in the community to help support it by uh, showing up and, and helping with it so what do you think of the rock wall, Mary? That's just incredible, Nancy. It's, it's big pieces, isn't it? It is. Really nice big slabs. So that's not easy. Um, when my husband was working on our wall, he, had, he was using two bobcats. <laughs> so it wasn't easy. They're heavy. The rocking chair and uh, what is that, a thigh, a hand thigh? You know, that was the old way they used to uh, make hay. And you needed that rocking chair after a day oh. of using that piece of equipment. Gosh, can you imagine <laughs> if you had a, got a few acres of hay? Oh, it would have taken... That's why they made rocking chairs. Yes. Yeah, this is just beautifully done. I am very impressed. So looking uh, above me, and above where it says museum, uh, I detect a uh, Norwegian theme in the design. It's, it's just beautifully done. And according to the sign on the door, they are open Sunday and Saturday from 1 to 4 um, between June and October. And I suppose maybe by special appointment you could come uh, some of the other times. But uh, Eliva really has a beautiful little museum. A lot of people have their family reunions here. Oh, cool. So it gets used, which is nice. All right, here we are, and we are just about to start this reunification process, reunifying uh, Eliva with its Hamlin post office desk and sign. And the death. Did we get pinched? No, no, no. I just wanted to get that tripod out of the way. Okay. No. Let's, let's just pull it forward a little bit more. Okay. Down. Down. On the top. It's probably pretty darn sturdy. Fine, it really yeah. isn't bad. No. All right, let's turn it around and put it right up against the doors here. Okay. And the doors 
Let's move it to this side because this door swings out first. Is that alright with you? Sure. Okay, and then closer towards the door. Okay. The desk and the sign, and it's right here by the double doors. That's where she needs help. So, will there be somebody out up here that can help move it in? The elderly, I think she said, she fell asleep. <laughs> So Mary, we're going for the windblown look today. We are. It's nice and breezy <laughs> and humid. You yeah. can't win. <laughs> Just can't win. So we've had this trip, this monumental trip, down to the Trumplo County Fairgrounds to the Lee School. And then all the way <laughs> to the other side of the county in Eliva. Yes. And they have a beautiful museum here. Definitely. And people, if you haven't seen it, you should check it out. And we are, like I say, this is the reunification process here between the Hamlin sign and the Hamlin post office desk. And I think at some point when we get a little more time, we'll have to go out and shoot some uh, footage about Hamlin where oh, it was. Oh, I think, I think yeah. so. And we can also come back when the uh, museum's open right. and do a little... A little exploration about what go went down over here in Oliva. Yeah. So thank you very much for coming along with us today. On our long road trip yep. from Boy. the middle to the end <laughs> and back all the way north. <laughs> oh, well, it's a good day for a road trip. So, <laughs> all right, we're going to sign off here from our wind blowing because our hairdressers, they gave up and left. No, they're busy with <laughs> concerts this weekend. Apparently we don't rank. No, okay. <laughs> And thank you for joining us on the History, History Files. It's always nice to get something home again. Yes, isn't it, it is. Yes, it just feels like this is a good match. <laughs> this is a good deal. Yes. <laughs> and it wasn't all that hard, and we never got stopped for illegal transport no. of uh, post office that's equipment. Right. I wonder, you know, because that's federal property. That might be federal property. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we should oh, stop oh, oh, tape oh. about right yeah. now. Let's just cut it. All right, let's, I'll get it turned <laughs> off. <laughs>